Hey yo, this is Yeti Whiskers, and welcome to another brand new series here on the old channel. We are going to be starting a Let's Play for Sprout, and if you've been paying attention to some of my other videos, this will not come as a surprise. I'm super, super excited about this. So we did a spotlight uh, probably a little over a month ago, and we did that on version 0.6. Now, we are on version 0 0.8, getting closer and closer to the official release. So, a uh, huge shout out again to the Phoenix Lodge for giving us access, early access to Sprout. Super, super excited to get this thing going. If you guys f would do me a huge favor, go check out the Phoenix Lodge on Twitter. There's a couple things right here in the, the um, what is this, the main menu, I guess. Um, there's a... A Discord server you can join. Uh, go follow the Phoenix Lodge on Twitter for sure. And if you're feeling incredibly generous, hit up the Phoenix Lodge's Patreon. Uh, they do great work. My favorite mod packs for sure. So if that's if you feel like it, please go ahead and go do that. Um, anyway, we are gonna get things going. S single player, create a new world. Uh, let's just call this uh, Yeti for now, and then survival. World options. So this is something I did not do in the last one, and I should have. In our world type, we want alternate terrain generation. So we'll make sure that that's turned on. That's the way you're going to get the best experience here on Sprout. So let's go ahead and create our new world. And it'll take a few minutes probably for it to load up. I do remember that about the last version. So since the last version, the Phoenix Lodge has added in a couple new custom NPCs as well as some more structures for those NPCs he's also added some new mods there's been some tweaks for which mods are which and what's going on in there and all kinds of fun stuff so there are some changes since the last version he's also added are the scavenger mode some more items have been implemented into that so when we first started it there was like barely there were barely any items that were affected by scavenger mode meaning you can't create them in scavenger mode you have to go find them um, but there have been more and more added since then so we're a couple versions past that so that's kind of what's been going on behind the scenes at least the very little that i know uh, the phoenix lodge has definitely been working hard if you guys are interested in f keeping up to date the best place to do that from what i have seen is to go to twitter.com slash the phoenix lodge and you get screenshots and sneak peeks and all kinds of fun stuff so i would highly recommend that Hopefully here shortly, we will get a world loaded. I'm going to wait. Here's what, here's what let's do. I will wait until this is loaded up, and then I'll bring you back with me. How about that? So I'll see you in a sec. <laughs> and welcome back. So you can see some things have changed here on the HUD as well. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got this fancy new setup going on. So your hotbar is still there. Here are your XP levels. Here's your XP bar and your health bar up here. We've also got a difficulty down here. So first things first, I am going to put us into scavenger mode. So here we go. So the way to do that, if you guys remember from the last video, is just FT, oop, TB, pack mode, set, scavenger, boop. And I think now we are in scavenger game mode. Ah, there we go. Mode set to scavenger. Okay. So next, I am going to... Save and quit, and then I'm going to jump back into my world so we don't have cheats enabled anymore. So I'll see you guys in just another second. And we're back. So just a heads up, uh, the first time you load into a world... Oh, man, we got to turn that off. Options, <laughs> controls, auto jump. Forget about it. Done. Done. Okay. So uh, the first time you load into a world for the first time, it's ger generating all your terrain and stuff. It takes much, much longer than when you just load up again. So that when I just loaded up again this last time, it took maybe 5 to 10 seconds. So... Don't be expecting huge, huge load times every time. But So first things first we're going to do is we are going to meet with the old Traveler and have ourselves a little conversation. The Traveler says, D did you just fall out of the sky? That must have hurt. Is there anything I can help you with? Let's ask him who he is. Me, I'm just a Traveler who nearly who you nearly landed on gave me quite a start. Let's see, I really don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me? Well, I don't have much to offer in terms of physical goods, but I know a thing or two about living off the land. I can also tell you about waystones, such as the one next to us. What would you like to know about? Let's do living off the land. Why not? Well, to start with, you need some basic materials. The easiest way to get some would be to hunt down 
bird's nest are few. Those birds have a tendency to hoard quite a few things that might come in handy. You should be able to find some by simply breaking some leaves. So, all right, let's go do that. Now, if you guys remember, woo, thank you. We got our achievement, our very first one. Okay, so if you remember, the quests are actually here in the inventory. So finding nests, a bird nest. The, the kind traveler's taking it upon himself to teach you some basics of survival in this world. So to start with, he wants you to break the leaves off trees until you find a bird's nest. That should not be hard. We have spawned ourselves in some sort of giant forest. So let's just whack a few of these leaves here real quick. And we should get a bird's nest oh, fairly quick, hopefully. I do like some of the things that have changed on the textures. Like these, uh, what are these, oak logs? You can see there's, you can actually see the, um, the rings on the trees and stuff. Like normal. Cool. I'm going to take some getting used to having the uh, hot bar on the left there. The bottom left, but that'll be alright. We will get used to it real quick. Come on. There we go. Got a bird's nest. You can see over here. Alright, let's go talk to you, Traveler. Where'd you go, buddy? There you are. So, you found out how to get bird's nest for some basic resources. Right click with them to find out what they hold. So these are similar to a loot bag, except instead of like all kinds of crazy stuff, you're getting some more basic items. But... Uh, let's see. Bird's nest provide a number of different resources, some of which are quite rare, but for the moment, you just need some flint and sticks. So let's complete that. Bing! And he gave us the flint sickle, which helps us in harvesting some of these guys. Boop! So let's go ahead and right click on the bird's nest. What do we get? We got, oh, if you look in the bottom right hand corner there, we got two flint, a uh, string, and some sticks. You can see that in our hotbar now as well. So let's go ahead and talk to the old traveler and see what he's got to say. Uh, who are you? I don't really know what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's do live off the land continued. Next, you'll need to use the materials you've gathered from the nest to craft yourself a crude hatchet. With this, you'll be able to cut down a tree or two to get some wood. Awesome. So our next quest is to... Oh, check out this rock. That's pretty awesome. Uh, sorry, got distracted. Next quest is to build ourselves a hatchet. And we need the crude hatchet here. Flint hatchet. Oh, we can't... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, two sticks. And, okay, so we're going to need to get, hold on one second, let me look at this, two sticks and some flint. Boop. This is very similar to some of the things he did with regrowth. If you guys remember, you don't actually have to have a crafting table in order to make a hatchet. So we've got a hatchet. Let's open up our quest and see if there's anything else that is tied to it. Nope, that's it. Just go, oh, grab our hatchet. Let's, wow, that's so cool. I love all the little details. Such a fan. Custom wagon that is hiding underneath our tree here. Okay, here we go. Good, good. Looks like you're getting the hang of the survival stuff. Now to apply what you've learned a bit more. All right, let's go talk to this guy. Who are you? Final. Living off the land, final. And now you know how to cut down a tree. Excellent. Take some of that wood and make yourself a crafting table. Then use that crafting table to make more robust tools from flint, which will serve you much better. So let us grab our hatchet real quick. Cut down some trees. Hey, getting wood, we did it! One thing I love about this is every time you play Minecraft, right, within the first two or three minutes, you know you're punching a tree. Getting yourself some wood. Alrighty. Oh, we already broke our hatchet, but that's okay. We've got some of the tools that we need. Okay, crafting table. I'm gonna change it to a crafting table. We can't change it to a crafting station yet. Maybe we won't be able to. Who knows? Okay, so we've got this guy. Next. Uh, right there. Let's see what other things we need to do. So we need to build a flint sword, flint axe, and a flint pickaxe. So in order to get more flint, I think we need to get more bird's nests. So let's start. Whoa, check that out. That was awesome. You can see all the items are hanging out on the ground. A lot has changed since the last version. Yes. Okay, so let's open up some more bird's nests. There we go. Now we should have enough tools. Uh, where do I check? There we go. Enough stuffs to make our tools anyway. Okay, so I think one was a flint sword. Ah, I forgot already. Flint sword. Okay. Got it. Let's open up our quest. I can't remember. Uh, axe and pickaxe. Okay. Axe and pickaxe. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Oh, no. Axe. Pickaxe. So we've got... We're going to need to go grab some more. Okay. No big deal. We got this handy dandy sickle that is just awesome. Woo! Fireworks going everywhere. I feel like it's pretty dangerous here in the, in the uh, forest. Boop. Okay, let's see. Oh, I saw one go down in there. Let's go grab this guy. Boop. Jump over this way. 
Okay, here we go. And another bird's nest there. Let's grab one, two, three. Well, we got redstone, glowstone, all kinds of fun stuff. Bunch of sticks. I do really like that, actually. It shows up on the bottom right-hand corner there. Okay, now we just need the axe. Boom. Okay, now we should... Oh, yeah, look at the top right. Quest complete. Basic tools. Take to this guy. Now you're armed and ready to take on the world. Go explore. Meet new people. Maybe some of them will have tasks for you, too. Which is very true. So when we do that, we get ourselves this little starter kit. And inside it, we get a waystone, a warp stone, portable crafting table, heart crystal shards. Ooh, I'm not sure what those will do. Some apples, a crystal ball. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Akashic tome. Akashic, that sounds good. As well as a sleeping bag. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Traveler. So we're going to come over here and punch this waystone, actually. And we will cut. Call it. Well, I don't know, whatever. Whatever that's called. That's what it's called. Okay. Let's also talk to him about waystones. So, waystones dot the landscape both in the wilderness and at places of importance. With a warp stone, one can freely teleport between ones they have found. For a waystone to be a valid destination, however, you must activate your connection with it by placing your hand on it. All right click. So, we just did that. They aren't just found in the wild, though. If you have the right materials, it's possible to craft waystones yourself. So if there's some place you consider important, you can add it as a potential destination yourself. If you so wish, you can also make scrolls which teleport the user to a singular waystone they're linked to. So if you wish to lead others to certain waystones they are yet to encounter, you can provide them with one of these scrolls. Excellent. 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 Can you write that down for me? Hey, look at this. On waystones. Very cool. We'll take that. We'll take that with us on our way. So let's see. Let's grab our crafting bench, wherever that thing went. Crafting table and let's head off it looks to me like on the mini map over here it looks like there's some structures that have been generated over here let's go take a look at these guys together Ooh, check it out a little house maybe we'll run into somebody if we're lucky what do you guys think dun, dun, dun. we're getting pretty close to level four as well Hello. oh okay well we're going in here now hello friends cake that's delicious furnace nothing in it Oh, I love the sound effects. Super echoey. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Let's see, go down here. Oh, this isn't like a roguelike dungeon because or something similar. I don't even know if that's in this pack, to be honest. Sure goes down a long ways, though. Sure enough, it is. Roguelike dungeon. Go back! Go back, everybody! We're not nearly ready for that. We'll come back and explore this a little bit later. <laughs> we are nowhere near geared up to take on a roguelike dungeon at this point. Here we go. Coming on up. Coming on up. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of exploring real quick, and I will catch up with you if there's anything new and exciting. So I will see you all in just a second. <laughs> all right, everybody, we are back, and we... I have reached level four, which if you remember last time, we can choose our class. So this will be the end of the video, but I need your help deciding what we should be. So minor, let's go over these real, real quick. Miner is plus 10 mining, plus 5 digging, plus 5 smelting, extra extra XP from mining. The warrior, plus 10 melee, plus 5 defense, plus 5 marksmanship, extra XP from combat. The artisan, here's your stats, plus 10 smelting, wood cutting plus 5, and cooking plus 5. We get extra XP from crafting, which that's pretty appealing to me. Spelunker, plus 10 defense, athletics and mining, I'll get boosts, extra XP from mining. Scout. Marksmanship, Stealth, and Athletics get boosts, and we get XP from combat. Farmer, oh, I get this. I think these are all in different order. <laughs> the, the columns are like the categories, kind of. So the Farmer, we get additions to farming, fishing, and woodcutting, and we get XP from crafting. Lumberjack, let's do woodcutting, defense, and athletics. The Fisherman, we get fishing, cooking, and woodcutting, and then obviously these ones all get XP from crafting. These ones over here get XP from combat, and these ones get XP from mining. So archaeologists, we get digging, mining, and woodcutting bonuses. The hermit, we get cooking, mining, and digging. The assassin, we get stealth, melee, and marksman. The zealot, we get athletics, melee, and defense. And the freelancer, we just get 20 skill points to use as we choose. So let me know what you guys think. Which one should we do? Which one would you choose? I need your help, and I will not choose one of these until I get some feedback. So I'm going to try and do a YouTube poll if I can figure that out. If not, just throw it in the comments. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're as excited for this series as I am. I cannot wait to get going into this. The more I play this, the more I love it. So that's all I got for today. Please go follow the Phoenix Lodge on Twitter. Send some support and love for all the hard work that they put in the mod packs. So phenomenal. Anyway, that's all I've got. We'll see you in the next episode.